So my phone says it's time to start. Welcome to my technical samba talk. Oh, he begins to speak, yeah. At least I'll try to. Um, welcome to the talk about cluster samba scalability improvements. Um, my name is Volker Lendecke. I don't really have introductory slides because I guess many of you have already seen me speak here. And I come from Germany, I work for Zanet. Um, Jeremy says I have the third or whatever patch in Samba. My first patch has come from 1994, so, and that's quite a while ago. Um, this talk will introduce a very specific problem that we faced at, actually at customer sites, as many customer sites for a long time, um, about one client behavior that we face Windows clients come in and open the root directory of a share in thousands, in numbers of thousands. And so you have a single file and you have 15, 20, 100,000 users opening that single file. Because for us, a directory is very similar to a file. They open a handle and they just keep it for whatever reason. And this is kind of a scalability problem for us. We have several bad workarounds. For example, in Samba you can turn off locking for directories um, and just fake them. And yeah, these are bad workarounds. And recently we faced another problem that we had actually an application or rather a .exe file that was opened by 15,000 clients simultaneously for read. Every single client in a company, in a customer environment opened this .exe file and so we had to do something about this. This talk will introduce the problems why, or the SMB share mods. Most of this should be known to at least some of you. Um, then we will talk, or I will talk about how Samba implements all this, how it goes to cluster, and then I will hopefully provide a solution for you to make this a lot better. Okay, Samba, I mean, this might be um, already known to you. Samba for each client forks a new process, and this has certain impl implications. This came historically from times before really standardization of the pthread model, and so every Unix program just did it the way Samba did the FTP server, SMTP, they fork a process to handle a single client, that's what we did. And this has saved us in so many accounts. It's, it is a burden because a process is much more expensive than a thread. So we have some kind of scalability problem here. Um, really thousands and tens of thousands of clients or connections to a single Samba server is more expensive than you would have to, uh, you would, would um, it, it's more expensive than for a multi-threaded server that just has very small state. It gives you distinct memory spaces, of course. Threads are shared memory. Um, and why is this kind of a problem? If you look at the specifications, MS SMB2 and MS FSA, there's a lot of shared data between all the connections, lots of tables like lists of clients, tree connects, files, name it, logs, whatever. A lot of data structures where the specifications kind of assume that all contexts, threads or whatever, have direct access to these tables. We can't do that because we have or we can't store them in main RAM because we have multiple processes. So what did we do? Samba shares all these data structures via a key value store um, called TDB. It's a memory mapped key value store. At the time, I mean, we, we named every little infrastructure piece with T. It started off as trivial or tridge or whatever. At the time when we, or when tridge started this, there was no really good shared writer database in the GDBM style or whatever. So Berkeley DB didn't really do it and Trich started its own. It's, it's very successful for us for the workload that we have, meaning very, very high, con high write load of many small records. It works very, very well for us. Um, it's not so good because it's still 32 bits, so for gigabyte file size, um, but for the workload we have, it's, it's really, really good. We do the shared 
uh, the, the um, protection of data structures via shared mutexes these days. FreeBSD since 11 does it, Solaris does it, and of course Linux does it as well. And yeah, everything else is done via F controllers, which kind of sucks. Um, what does it give us? If you look at the specification, of course there's a lot of shared access to all kinds of data structures from everywhere. And that's the main pro problem that people have when writing or yeah, when designing multi-threaded programs. You always have every access to everything everywhere. And that's kind of can create, if you're not very careful, this will create a dependency hell. Samba had to be, due to the process model, had to be very, very strict in separating out and defining the interfaces between the SMBDs from the start. And this made it possible that we were able to make it clustered. And I'll describe what's going on with clustering in a minute. Where's our problem? Share modes. Where do share modes come from? Basically, it's a legacy from DOS. Because DOS was a single user, single tasking program, a single tasking operating system, every application that ran at that point was sure to be alone on any file. It didn't have any competing access on the file. And then Share.exe came around, and this helped multi-process, multitasking extensions of DOS to really maintain the illusion that an application is alone. So, in those days, the default, when somebody opened a file with the default syscalls, or interrupts, or whatever you call them, um, the default was nobody else can access the file while word.exe, while whatever, visicalc, or what, name it, had the file open. Um, then, some late, at some later point, applications came around that were actually network aware. So additional APIs were introduced to explicitly allow sharing, but the default was, hey, I'm alone on that file, just to maintain backwards compatibility. This is one thing that Microsoft is really, really good at, maintain backwards compatibility like, to like 20 years ago. And this is a main difference why an SMB server is so much harder to scale than a POSIX server, like NFS, because if you take a look at what happens when POSIX opens a file, we only have to take a look at read-only data, like ACL and stat information, file size, location of data, and so on. That's all. That's, and that can be made very, very efficient. We only have local read-only information to information, uh, read-only access to information on disk. In share modes, it's different. Because this API is a per open thing. On an open, at open time, one client can say, okay, I don't want anybody else to read this file while I have this handle open. What this means is that when we open a file, we need to check whether anywhere in the system slash cluster, somebody has the file open for read as well. This is more than just looking at the very relatively static ACL on disk. And that makes it difficult to scale. Okay, let's go down into more specifics. Okay, when opening a file over SMB, you can ask for what kind of access do I want? This one is a bit spe uh, special. You can, uh, and the, David Goebel, um, in the, his last talk, described a bit how Windows, uh, how Windows deletes a file. What you do is you open a file asking for the permission to delete the file. Then in a separate stage, you tell it, hey, when I close this file, please delete it. And then you close the file. And this close then implicitly deletes. This means you have a special access bit asking for delete permission. You also have a special access bit in the ACL. Hey, I'm allowed to delete or not. Okay, the obvious ones are of course read and write, then delete. Every open call 
has, a, has another bit mask to open, to allow others to read, write, or delete. And this has nothing to do with permissions. This is always allowed, irrespective of you would be able to delete by ACL or so. You can always say, I want to open for read, but I don't want anybody else to delete this file while I have it open. OK, this is really first come, first serve. The first one to open the file can prevent anybody else from opening for delete. And read in the docs, all open handles are entered in the central table. And what we have in our internal data structure is the share mode, that's this kind of bit set here, and the access mask, we enter that into a central array at this point. And here we have one locking.tdb, that's our central share mode database. This is one of these interop, uh, interprocess, uh, where are we? No, yeah, one of these TDBs that provide this clean separation layer. So all open handles are indexed by, uh, by essentially by inode, are entered into the locking.tdb, so everybody else, every other SMBD can walk this list and see is there any conflicting open. Okay, enter clustering. So what is clustering? Samba's way to do, to do clusters gives the illusion of a single system image regarding SMB. So you have a cluster of four, 10, 20 nodes. We don't really scale to hundreds or thousands. Um, so you have your cluster of four nodes and you have four IP addresses on to the and to the client then, this appears as a um, essentially a, a, a multi-home server, a server with multiple IP addresses, NICs or something. What this means is that this locking.tdb information about the share modes needs to be available to everybody in a very quick and dynamic manner. So what does it mean? We store the share mode information in locking.tdb and now we need some component that makes this locking.tdb available to everybody in the cluster. How does this work? We created a CTDB daemon, clustered trivial database daemon, which the, the, the most prominent task of it is to move these records, these locking.tdb records around. It has some more tasks, so it, initially it also did the monitoring, it did IP allocation, it does inter cluster uh, internode messaging and so on. It still can do those, but we try to get away with this because the, the external clustering like Pacemaker or so, um, they have matured a lot, so you can now configure away this monitoring, this IP address allocation and so on, all this stuff. Um, the code is still there, but yeah. So I'll have a nice picture on the next slide. Um, what it does is SMBD wants to open a file, or a client wants to open a file. SMBD does the stat call, finds inode number one. Sorry. SMBD now needs to find out, is there any other open? Is there a conflicting share mode? So I need to take a look at the locking.tdb record where we have the list of all opens. What it does is, it looks into the local locking.tdb, and if it's, the record is not there, it goes to ctdb. Hey, get me a copy. And let's go to the next slide. This is a basic overview of how ctdb works. Here we have two ctdb demons talking over TCP. I think we still have some code to do this over, over native InfiniBand, but I don't think that it works. But this is basically port 4379, I believe, um, the CTDB deems talking to each other. And we are looking at locking.tdb here. And CTDB is our basic record bouncing daemon, shuffle, shuffle the records around. So SMBD opens a file, creates a record in locking.tdb, however, yeah, creates a record here in locking.tdb for this file, enters its share mode. 
Then a client comes in to this one here, wants to open the same file, slash foo. SMBD gets the stat information, gets the inode, calculates the locking.tdb key, looks in the local database, sees, hmm, record not there. What it then does is, hey, get me this record. CDDB now looks at the so-called location master. CTDB does a calculation on the record key, and we have a fixed allocation of the so-called location master. That's a daemon, that's a specified node that knows where the record is. So, this one here created a record. This means right now, this one here is the data master. The location master, that might be this or this or somebody else, the location master is aware, hey, the record is here. What happens now is, this SMBD asks for the record for slash foo, asks CTDB, hey, we, somebody we found, somehow we find out, okay, no, uh, locking.tdb record is here, this one gets it over here, stores it here. Lots of traffic, but it's reasonably efficient. These SMBDs here talk to the CTDB for the request, hey, get me the record, just with a normal Unix domain stream socket. And all of them directly access the locking.tdb via mmap slash fcontrol and, and, and mutex access. Yes, question? The location master is all, the, the question was when does the location master get updated? Um, the, the, the way it works is you look at the um, record, then there is some kind of hash function on this record, modulo the number of nodes. That's roughly how it works. So, and for each key that we have, for each record key, we have always a fixed number, and this is the dynamic assigned location master. It's, it's a hash, it's a plain hash. Whenever the configuration changes, nodes come and leave. We always recalculate the whole thing, but every node must be aware about the, uh, must be aware of the, or is aware of the current configuration of the cluster, and so can always do the same Elmaster hash calculation. So it's really a, a simple hash function from the record key to a node number for this Elmaster calculation. That's a fixed function on all nodes, and from there the Elmaster always has knowledge about where the record is. Okay. So this is mmap, and everybody has the direct access, which is very fast. Let's go back to the previous slide. Why does this scale at all? It sounds very, very expensive. Because, I mean, what used to be very fast, a local mmap with mutex access, now becomes much more expensive, because we potentially have to ask CTDB and another node for every single database access. It's not so bad because locking.tdb can be lossy. What do we store in locking.tdb? We store information about open file handles. So, records are created on node zero. It moves to node one. Node one, the only reason for it, for this, for this motion is, add an open file handle entry to the record. So, node zero still has the copy. It updates the re uh, our record sequence number. It goes to the, other, to the other node. The other node only enters its own open file handle here. The point is why CTDB scales is we don't need to replicate this everywhere because it's only open file handle data. What happens if this node crashes? The file handles are closed by definition. So, this one still has an old copy. This one dies, but only the only information that dies with it is information that is obsolete anyway by the death of the node. And then some more recovery get, kicks in and says, okay, we need to collect from all remaining nodes the latest, the latest writer, and that's all it is. 
So this is why it's so fast, and this is why when SMBD here beats and hammers a single entry, we just fetch it once, we create it once locally, and we don't have to tell SM CTDB at all anymore. We don't have to tell anybody else. When we open, close, open, close, whatever, do opens multiple times and so on. Because we don't care about replication. And this is precisely why we have so much problems implementing persistent share modes. Because, because we don't really have a good model with the existing CTDB to get over this. Because with persistent handles, we need to replicate. We need to survive a node death. And this is why Ralph has invented this, hey, let's make parts of these records persistent by replicating and syncing everywhere and so on. We need to extend CTDB. But this is what makes the cluster scale at all. The fact that we don't replicate, that we just look at local databases when we have them. OK. What does this mean? Locking.tdb scales nicely for home directory workloads. Essentially, everybody working in his own compartment, maybe some group project follows whatever, with limited shared access. You create these records, they are local, and as long as you're alone on these, um, it's all fine. It's almost as fast as, yeah, purely local access. Then we came, we came across the behavior of Windows that every client opens the root directory of the share, read only for whatever reason. This means because share modes also apply to directories and you can open a directory as a handle, this means this record in locking.tdb becomes really, really, really large. We got away with the fact that share modes don't really, really count on directories in the use cases that we come, came across. So what we did is we created a bad hack saying that, OK, for the directory handles, for in particular for the root directory, just don't mess with CTDB. What we did is we fake the inode number, essentially, to make it exclusive per node, per cluster node. Now, we don't really fake the inode number. We, we fake the device number. It's the file ID module. What we do is every node for these particular files get their own device number, meaning there is no real shared access because everybody believes, hey, this is another file when looking at locking.tdb. So records are created, records are stored locally, and when another SMBD opens this file, it gets the illusion that this is really a fresh record, no contention. OK, we got away with this for a few years. Worked amazingly well. But it's kind of cheating. We violate the SMB spec. Then we got this. We have this as the phone book exit. It's a customer with 15,000 clients. And they all double tick or auto start the central company phone book as a central exit, probably an access database or whatever, just to have the phone numbers of all other colleagues. One central phone book exit on a central share, 15,000 accesses. We could have added the same hack for this particular file, and we did this for this customer because, I mean, the solution I present here is much more effort, and it works amazingly well. Um, but it's really a pain, so we had to do something about this. Every open call, oops, sorry, wrong button. Every open call has to check 15,000 share mode entries. That in itself is a problem. Because, I mean, that's a linear array, and conflicting share modes can hide anywhere in this array. And non clustered Samba, yeah, it's a bit more CPU, but it's no real record bouncing between nodes. This is what really hurts. Um, it's a bit of CPU, yeah, CPUs are almost infinitely fast. So it's, it's okay, it works. Um, it's still nonlinear processing time at open time, every open, so it's kind of all O to the order of n square. But when you have a single big server, that works nicely. However, 
When 15,000 SMBDs ask CTDB, hey, get me this node on every single open. And a shareable entry, I don't know how many bytes that is. 50 something in the order of 50 times 15,000. That's a lot of data to shuffle around per open. So we need to do something about this. And this here is the basic idea. We want to optimize <coughs> for the completely non-contented case, meaning all opens just go through and there is no contracting share mode. I mean, this is exactly what this phone book XR does. Every open just opens for read, everybody else is allowed to read and so on. We avoid walking the whole list on every open call by, okay, we just do bookkeeping with, hey, we have a central entry for the most restricted share mode. So we have these 15,000 opens. And what we now do is, or we don't yet, it's kind of work in progress. Um, what we now do is we maintain one entry that says, in this list, everybody allowed concurrent read, everybody allowed concurrent write, and so on. And we do lazy update on this by saying, okay, when a new open comes in that prohibits others to read and the central restrictive share mode said others are allowed to read and I add another open, another share mode that prohibits this, I obviously have to update the most restrictive share mode because it just became more restrictive. When closing, we don't update. Because, hey, we don't have a really good place to say we were the only single more restrictive whatever update. When closing, when removing this more restrictive update, we just don't bother. And, on, on, and what we then do is if a open comes in and sees a conflict, then we walk this list. Because there might have been the one conflicting open in this list that has been closed, then when we see the conflict, we have to update the most restrictive share mode with the new truth. And this is supposed to optimize the, yeah, the shared directory case, the phone book exa case, where there are just no conflicts. And at open time, we only look at one entry we add ourselves to the list. At close time, we don't do anything. Yeah, and that's kind of the basic idea. This optimizes the massive non-conflicted case. Okay. How does it help us with a cluster case? What we then can do when we have this logic and it works, we don't want to bounce these 15,000 share mode entries per open. CTB completely dies. And what we now can do with this basic logic in place, we can go and have this share mode data. This is, this is what we internally have as our share mode record. And the current implementation, we can look at that, has this huge list of share mode entries, all 15,000 in one record. Nicely encoded, nicely marshaled, and so on. And what we then will do is the following. We have one, two, three nodes. And we create a per node list with not only one of these most restrictive share modes, but one per node. This means this record here in CTDB is updated extremely rarely, only when new nodes come in. So what happens at open time? Let's look at this idea again. At open time, we look at the most restrictive share mode and the extension to the cluster is we not only have one most restrictive share mode, 
but one per record, uh, per node. So this is, I mean, as I said, we don't really scale to thousands of nodes. We scale maybe to 32 or something, name it. But this is a small record to, compared to 15,000. So we maintain one of these most restrictive share modes per node. And then every node, in the same manner, just maintains its own local copy here. And an open now goes in and looks at these three super share modes. I, I'm yet to come up with a good name for this. I just call this super share mode per, per, uh, per cluster node. And so we go through, we are on node zero. We look at all the others, no conflict. And we are sure that these are the most restrictive share modes that are coming from node one, node two, or node zero. Node zero. So we only have to look at a very small list, and if there's no conflict, all we do is maintain a local record, a local entry here, a local array, and that's simple. And coming back to this slide here, or rather this slide here, I, I explained why CTDB is fast. Because once we retrieve a record locally, once we create a record locally, we don't have to bother with the cluster anymore. So we just have to maintain local copies, which is reasonably fast. We don't have to tell CTDB anymore. And the same for this state. And if you look at the picture here again, this record needs to be shared read-only. And we need to extend CTDB to do that properly. So everybody has a read-only uh, copy. And the local nodes only maintain this array. This means no cluster communication for opens in the non-contented case. What happens if we get a conflict? We want to open something on node zero. We get a conflict with node two. Then we need to look at this record. And only in the conflict case, we ask CTDB, hey, get us this other array. And for this, we have the nice CTDB record transport and just update the truth here. That's basically, hopefully, getting us a lot better. So let's take, ah, uh, not my laptop. No alt tab to samba sources open files idea. <laughs> I can open it for you if you like. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. That's a terminal. Uh, just open files.idl of master. A little bit bigger, probably. Hmm? A little bit bigger, probably. Yes, please. All right. Source 3. Yeah, really... for tab, right? Source 3. Lib, lib NDR. NDR. No, all lib is right. Open files, huh? Genau. Okay. okay, here we are. Bigger, bigger. How big? Is that readable? So, okay, here we are. It's Kaza and Ada is Kaza. Okay, this is our shareboard entry. I spoke about shareboard entries, I'll just put this to the top of the screen. Uh, here we are. This is really what we store on disk for these share mode entries. And this is bounced. We have one per open of these. And what you see here is a lease index and an op-lock type. This is OP type, but it's op-locks. OK, we got a problem. When looking at the definition of our share mode data, and that's the blue one on top, the general one, we have two arrays. We have these share modes, and we have leases. <coughs> and this is, I, I, I'm not sure if that's exactly what the FSA, or rather SMB spec, actually mandates. Um, what you can do is you can open a file with a lease, and these leases are, of course, shared between different file handles. That's the main point of leases. What we do is, each of these share mode entries 
point at a certain lease that is attached to this file handler. Now, I told you a lot about, oops, about the share mode entries and super share mode and so on, and I only spoke about conflicts. There's this other aspect of the share mode entry, which is, hey, do we have to break an op lock when opening? How do we deal with that? Essentially the same problem. And it becomes more difficult because a share mode entry here and a share mode entry here could reference the same lease. Where do we store the leases? The solution I came up with, and this is the piece that is actually working already, is the following. If I get this to work, go to the next slide, please. No. Huh? Crap. Ah, here we are. What about leases? There's two arrays. Every share corresponds to the lease entry and so on. Where to? So, I started out with, hey, we have clean separation of concerns because we are multi-process. If you look at our test suite, what can happen is you can reference a lease key, client good and lease key, from different TCP connections. Now, SMBs can't look at their at their corresponding tables, and what we have to do is, we get a lease key, we need to figure out, is this lease already used in a different SMBD? What does this mean? We need a shared data structure, and this is all existing. Jeremy did this. This is all existing. We need a shared data structure that is indexed by lease key, essentially. So a lease comes in, we need to figure out, hey, is this already referencing a reference in another SMBD? And we need to work with that. What we have is a leases.tdb. And yeah, this is indexed by client good and lease key, thanks to the multi-process um, thingy. And what I did already do is, I just essentially removed this array. Here, this one, this is gone. Because what essentially we have here is this guy here. This is essentially an index. This is the per file handle thingy, share mode entry. In each of these, there we have this lease index, which is the index into the leases array. What I put instead here is, hey, client good and lease key. Referencing. So this array down there that holds all the lease information just goes away. We have no problem. And the point is, these entries here are much, much less contended. I mean, we don't have this massive 15,000 file handles, 10 minutes, 15,000 file handles referencing the same lease. Hopefully, this doesn't happen. If it happens, we need to think, there's another talk. And yeah, that's basically it, what we want to do. Current status. Removing of leases TDB, uh, leases from locking TDB, that's done. This central super share mode, share mode union, I'm still open for new names. Um, this is work in progress. We have some questions to do. Um, open problem, cleanup of share mode data. I mean, once you create new records somewhere, you need to be very certain that you clean up behind you at shutdown and so on, that you don't leave anything behind. Samba, can, Samba is written to live with, <coughs> with crashing nodes, with crashing processes, so we have cleanup. But we have cases where we don't properly really clean up data structures after an SMBD has died. We have always good mechanisms to deal with conflict. So once we hit a record that is a conflict to anything, is it a share mode, is it a lease, it is a something, um, we always look, does this process that created this record still live? And if it doesn't, just wipe it. But this doesn't prevent us from just leaking. 
and we need some very good thought about, we create a lot of more records, we create these arrays in separate nodes, we need to be very careful to clean them up after us and have some good mecha. So this is kind of work in progress, but the summary here is, um, yeah, I think we can really scale to thousands and thousands of opens in an almost linear way um, if there are no conflicts. And that's basically my talk. Questions? Yeah. So the, the share data, if I understand right, the share data, no two entries on any node can conflict. And similarly, the leases, no two leases granted and conflict on any That's the whole point of this mechanism. But what about pending leases? Like if I take out a, a lease request that you currently prevent me from granting because you hold it. And until you release your lease, I can't get mine. Do you have another table for that? Okay. So the question was, Existing leases can't conflict, um, existing share modes can't conflict, and so on. What happens in the pending case when things are in flight? So what we do for this is, um, we have all this mechanism here in our lease table at this point. And breaking two requests, breaking two required, we have an epoch and so on, everything that, and this, this is normally, uh, right now it's in locking.ttb. All this information moves to the leases.tdb, and in this conflicting case when things are in flight, we have to bite the bullet to make it more expensive because we have to access the second database. But yeah, that's, we have to access the second leases.tdb, but everything that we have here moves into the other database. And the access are supposed to be, yeah, a bit slower possibly, but still work as if it was in a single array. Hopefully, yes, we hopefully we do. Hopefully, hopefully, yes. What about the leases TDB record? Yeah, I didn't tell the whole truth. Um, I, I, I wanted to make it simple. Um, <laughs> I know, we, we want the full story now. Yes, we the super share mode will also contain um, the lease state that we handed out from these entries. Oh, okay. So we can also take a look here. From this, we gr didn't grant any lease, so we enter this information here. Yeah. We granted read leases from here, we enter this information here. So, and this means our function called delay for op blocks, which is looking at this. When it sees, hey, I have to break some lease here, I have to walk this list. But that's the contention case again. Yeah. <coughs> More questions? Okay, are these lists by any chance sorted so that you don't have to walk anything in the 15,000 case? That's, uh, so at this point right now, um, the, existing, the, the question was um, walk linearly 15,000. Um, the current implementation is not, is not sorted. Um, whether we want to sort these eventually, we don't know. But that's, that's kind of a micro-optimization that comes later when we, when we start touching this code, code anyway. More questions? Yeah, Jeremy. So it, it's not so much speed up as going from not working at all to being able to work, right? Kind of, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for your attention.